Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and a uh, bit of a maths test for us today. Um, this is from the Dutch puzzle master Ard von der Wetering and uh, I'm looking forward to it with some trepidation because I have not done any um, arithmetic preparation for this. Um, I know what the rule set is and I haven't done any of the maths in my head anyway. We will have a look at that in a moment. Don't forget that on Patreon you can still enter our quite approachable Sudoku hunt for another 11 days or so. Um, there's loads of other content there on Patreon as well, including Simon tangling with Fistamafel more than once. Uh, also, of course, do check out our Discord and so on. Always stuff going on there. We've got merchandise, we've got apps, we've got Sven Sudokupad. They're all on the links under the video. But the first link is to this puzzle. And uh, the rule set is disarmingly simple from Ard. And he gives us given digits. Ard is old school and he's prepared to give us some. Ten given digits. Very generous. Um, but there are also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven lines in this puzzle, including a green one. So that's a different color just to differentiate that um, it's a different line. Uh, now, the product of the digits on each line is 2,520. So if you multiply these nine together, you get 2,520. The same is true for these four. So um, the email I got said, how is your factorization? I guess we will find out. But do give this a try if you fancy it. Feel free to make some notes on paper before you give it a go. I think that would be perfectly reasonable in the circumstances. But I am going to start now, so let's get cracking. Well, the first thing I can tell about 2520 is ending in a zero and not in a number that is divisible by... Well, it is clearly divisible by 5, and only one 5, interestingly. I can see that. And if we divide it by 5, we get 504. Now, that is going to be divisible by 9. The grid is telling me it's divisible by 8 as well. So what is 8 into 504? That is 8 into 50 goes 6. 64. That can't be right, because then... It wouldn't be divisible by 9. Let's try again. 8 into 504, which was the right sum here. 8 into 504 is 4. 40 is... No, that's wrong. 60. That's right. 480. And then another 24, which is 3. 63, not 64. My, okay, my factorization is terrible. Right, 7 times 9 times 8 times 5 gets us there. And that is got to be what the numbers on the green diamond, basically. Because, yeah, let me just check it. 72 times 7 is 504 times 5 is 2520. Yes, right, 5, 7, 8, 9. Now we can use that, surely. We've got the 8 here. So we might need to break that we're always going to have a 7 and we're always going to have a 5 on these lines. And in this case, we have two other numbers. Now, they could be 9 and 1 or 3 and 3 to make the other 9. But they can't be 9 and 1 on this one. On, I've chosen exactly the right line to look at. Good for me. Because those two cells can't be 9 and 1 and nor can that. So although that could be either, it can't be both. And we must need two threes on this line. So one of them's in row nine. One of them is definitely in row eight. And we're using three, three, five, seven to make this one work. So all the digits on the line come from three, five, and seven. One of these twos are three. I'm going to pencil mark that and risk misunderstanding my pencil marks later. Now, this has got a three on it. It's going to have to have five and seven. Ah, but then the other digits are going to make 8 times 3, or 24. Now, the 7 can't be in those two cells, so it's definitely in one of those. The 5 could be anywhere. But the other two make 24. Ah, now I was going to say that could be 6 times 4, but look, this 6 sees all the cells. So it's not 6 times 4, it's 8 times 3 again. So we're going to get a 3 in one of these two. Everything on it is from 3, 5, 7, or 8. And these ones can't be 7, 
and these ones obviously can't be three. By ordinary Sudoku, I can see I've got a three in one of these two cells. Now, are there any numbers that can't be on it, or has this number been selected? I think 2520 20 has been selected partially. Maybe it is even the minimum, the lowest common multiple of all the Sudoku numbers. It probably isn't. Do, do let me know, because I'm always interested in that kind of stuff. Now, I'm going to look at this one next. Now look, that three is in a position like that six. It sees all these digits. So there's no three on this one. Um, so to get the three components, we're going to have to use a nine. Now we haven't had a line yet where one was possible in the end. But this might be the one. Three, nine, no, not three, nine and five. Now we're definitely going to have to have a seven somewhere. But then the rest that we have to make up is eight, which could be eight, one or two, four. Now that one sees three cells. So if it was eight, one, we'd have a one here. But with two, four, I don't know. I mean, I could pencil mark these as all one, two, four, seven, eight or nine, but that feels a bit feeble. Now, this diagonal, nine possible numbers, but we can eliminate two of them because ones don't affect the product at all. Now we've got to have a five and a seven. Right, the seven is not there or there because of that seven, and it's not here because this is a five, seven, eight, nine quad. In fact, I've just realized one must be on the other diagonal in this box. Um, so seven is down in one of these two cells, and that means this one isn't a seven. Now what about five? Can we pull any trick like that? No, not really. I think all of these five cells, four cells, can hold the five. So once we've got seven and five, then we've got 72 more. Nine times eight. And we're going to have to have some non-one digits. In fact, two of the ones I've got highlighted have to not be one. And these three. We're going to have to have seven non-one digits on this line. Well, that's really surprising. What can they be to make 72? We can have two threes. Oh, and three twos, of course. I mean, eight is two cubed and three is two squared. So we're going to have to have three twos, two threes, the two ones we've got, five and seven. Wow, so there's going to be a two in each box, and that is therefore a two seven pair. That's really clever. Uh, this is a two, well, there's going to be two threes, so we couldn't fit any in that box, so we're going to have to put one in this box. It goes there, not here anymore. We're going to have to have one in this box along with the two that needs to go in it, and these are going to have to be a two... Oh, I was going to say a two and a five, but now I've done something wrong. So it's probably in my maths. We can't put a two and a five in here because the five in the box is in one of those cells. So I have definitely done something wrong. So I'm going to go back to where I was before. Think about this line again. Now, surely... We've got the, those two ones. We, oh, I, I'm so, okay, I was not clever there. I put one there because I was for a moment imagining this was a diagonal Sudoku, and that's absolute bobbins. Now, okay, well, at least I've established, sort of established, that it doesn't work if you have three twos, two threes. This is how it would be if there was no further one in the central box. I think there is going to be a one in the central box, but let's pretend there wasn't. Then we're going to have to have two twos, two threes, no, three twos, two threes, the five and the seven. And that does not work for the reasons we've just effectively seen. If that was two seven to get the two in as well as the seven, um, this would have to be two three, but then 
or 2-3 because you need two threes on the line, or 2-5 because five can't be there. And either way round, you either don't get enough threes on or you get a five in the central box. Anyway, that proves, he says, that it doesn't work, that there is a one on this line in the middle. And now we don't have to have all of those three twos, two threes, five and a seven. Um, so all I've done is prove I need a one on that line. Now, can I prove on this line, I don't think this is going to be as easy, that there must be three ones. We've got the same sort of problem. We've got, if there weren't three ones on it, well, it, maybe it's manageable this time. We would have two ones, three twos, two threes, um, a five and a seven. So there'd be a two in each box. There'd be a three in two of the boxes and a one in two of the boxes and then a five and a seven. I mean, I, it's hard to rule out. Maybe I need to think further about this diagonal line, and now I know that there are three ones. Which two numbers am I going to jam together to make a larger factor out of the three twos, two threes, five and a seven, which don't work? Well, I can't use the five or the seven. So I'm either going to put the two threes together and make a nine, which would have to be up here somewhere, the two, two of the twos together to make a four, or two and a three to make a six. Wow, there's a lot of alternatives. So I don't, I don't think I've gone the right route here yet. Okay, I'm going to just look at sevens. We've got a seven there and a seven in both of these, in one of these two cells, I mean. Um, so there's a seven down here, but it can't be there because that would stop there being a seven on this line at all. So it's in one of those two which sort of forms an X-wing with those. Now there has to be a seven and a five indeed on this line. They can't be in the central box. Seven can't be here or here anymore can't be there either. So seven's in one of these three positions. Um, I don't know what to do with that. Maybe I've got to just work harder on the other things. Oh, this line needs a seven on and it can't be in those positions. Right, that's more straightforward. Now it needs a five on somewhere. Then it is going to need, it can't have a one, and it's got a two. It's going to need, after seven and five, we have 72, and it's had two. So we need another 36 in two digits. Well, that could be two sixes, or it could be nine four. So those are all from those possibilities. Um, I don't feel that I'm really getting to grips with this. This one has a five and a nine and a seven and then two digits. Oh, well the seven can't be there now. Oh, and it can't be here because we've got seven narrowed down to those. So this is a nine seven pair. Oh, and putting a seven in there has fixed seven in this box. So we get a seven in this cell. This is now not a seven. So one of these is a seven and one of them is a three. Thanks to the pencil marking earlier for that. So this is now a three, five pair. Sorry, just fixing the marking there. Now, what does that mean? Nine, one, eight, three, seven. So these other digits in the row are from two, four, five, and six. I don't think it means much more than that. Um, seven. So there's a seven somewhere here. Let's just keep looking at these sevens. Right. I seem to have got this 
Yes, now that can't be a 7. Yes, but in the columns, this is. Now I've got an X-wing on 7s in those positions, and these can't have 7s. So one of those two, one of those three, and one of those two for the last three sevens apart from the X-Wing in rows four and six. Can't really do much about that. Um, okay, but at least we've got the sevens on the diagonals and everywhere. I wish I could do the same sort of thing for fives. Now this pencil marking is not as helpful. There's a five in one of those three positions. Ah. Actually, there's a 5 in one of these two, so that is not a 5. Now there's a 5 in one of those two, which tells me this isn't, but that's not very helpful. I suppose I can see 3, 5, 7, 8 on this line still to go, that none of these digits can therefore be 3, 5, 7, or 8. Maybe that's an interesting way to look at it. I don't, doesn't feel all that helpful. Oh, where's one going in this box? It's got to be here. That's surprising. I have a feeling the middle is going to be one because both of these lines are going to need ones on, but I can't be sure of that yet as far as I know. can't just put in numbers based on feelings. It would irritate people. There's a 9 in one of those two cells by Sudoku. Um, one, six, seven. This can't be a 6. Could that be a 9? Yeah, 9 is one possible mashup of two numbers in this column, uh, in this diagonal. Oh, I'm not making sensible progress here. That can't be 1579 or 2. I doubt very much that it can be 8, but it's not really a conclusion that's fair to draw at the moment. 173. Oh, look, we've got a 9 in one of these two cells for definite, because it can't be anywhere else in the box. I'm wondering about 8 as well. The only way there could be 8 in one of these two cells is if that is where 8 goes on this right-hand line. And that is possible. If 8 was there, then we couldn't have another 8 on the line. 8 would be there and in one of those two. So 8 is either there Ah, 8 is in one of these three cells in this box. And they all effectively see this, because this line can't have two 8s on. So there is no 8 there, and that's a 5-7 pair. And this must be a 3-8 pair, therefore. Good grief. How did that happen? I didn't even see that coming. Let's remove the pencil marks. Right. Now, 5-7 pair there. This is not a 5. One of these two is... And, more interestingly perhaps, this line needs a 5 on it. It can't be in those cells now, and it can't be in the central box. It can't be there, so it's on one of these two places. Definitely a 5 in one of them. These can't be 5s. This can't be a 5, since we got a 5 in one of those two. So in this box, we can't have a 5 here on the line with another 5. So 5's in one of those two cells, in box 7, and therefore not here. And we've placed the 5 on the negative diagonal. How peculiar. That means this can't be 5, and this is. This is a really interesting rule set in terms of how this works. Now... We are going to get a 5 in one of these two, but it can't be here because there's a 5-7 pair. It goes on the diagonal. That doesn't surprise me that 7 and 5 don't wind up on the diagonal in the same box. It places 5 in column 3. 
because we can't have two fives on the diagonal. Not because of the diagonal rule, but just because of the um, product rule. We get a three there. That makes this an eight. That makes this a three. Now we're actually moving around the grid in a weird sort of way. Three must be in one of those cells. Three in row two has to be in one of those two. Oh, I've got great suspicions about whether it can be on the line. Now, what are th these two have to multiply up to 36. So these markings are still possible. It could be a pair of sixes as well as nine times four. This one, five, seven, nine, these two multiply up to eight. So there are, ah, and this one can't be eight or one now. So that's a two, four pair. Good grief. It's so clever, this puzzle. There's definitely a one in one of those cells. There's definitely a six in one of those two, and there's definitely an eight in one of the three. So two and four in box four are in these two cells, uh, in these three cells somewhere. And that means they're all looking at this, which becomes a six. And that is a weird find as well. This one can't be two or four, so that is three or eight. Now, I don't think we can have an eight on this line. If we have an eight on this line, we've used seven, eight, and five. And these remaining digits have to multiply up to nine. And there's no way you're going to do that. So we can't have an eight on it. We have to have a three there. That fixes... No, hang on, it doesn't necessarily fix three because we can have another three on the line. So stop treating it like a diagonal. We've got eight in this box. We've got a two, four pair. Um, eight. I don't know. I doubt that we can have an eight on this line, but I haven't proved that. Let's have a look. Now we've got a three on this. Uh, we were going to mash up two numbers somewhere along it, weren't we? Rather than, ah, oh, well, we can't have three twos now. So one of the twos is going to be mashed with one of the other numbers, which, was, which are twos and threes. So we're either going to get a three, a four, a two, and a one on the line, or a six, a one, Can't even do this anymore. What am I thinking? Um, if we had a six on the line. Oh, I've just seen maybe the way to realize, or the thing to realize is that there must be a six on one of the lines at least. And a four on one of them. So in one case, that's gonna multiply two of the numbers together. It can't do it twice on this diagonal. Oh, this is interesting. I don't know. I'm I'm tempted to try and skip that step in a sort of cheaty way. Okay, what I'm going to do is a bit of Sudoku first, because I find that easier. One and eight have to be in those cells somewhere. That means eight is in one of those two. This is a six, nine pair now. I've only just realized they've been available for a while. These are from two, four and eight. Definitely include an eight. Six has to be in one of those two cells now. It, it could be, it's either in both of those or just that one. <laughs> oh, it's so strange. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm going to think again about this. Now, here on this diagonal, We've got the 5 and the 7. So we need to multiply up 72 from the rest. Now, I'm convinced that's going to involve three 1s. Can I prove that? If it didn't, if it only had two 1s, then we worked out earlier we'd need three 2s. So that would be a 2. That would be a 2. Oh, that can't be a 2. There is no 2 possible here. So that's quite interesting. That, that 2 rules out from that cell and there's a two there so that's not a two. So we can't have three twos on the line and I think that means as with this one 
we need three ones. Let me just think that through again. Even if I'm re redoing the maths, I think I need to think it through. So we've got the five and the seven. This is the diagonal I'm thinking about. We've got the five and the seven. We can ignore ones. The rest is 72. If we don't have three twos, and we can't now because we can't have one in box one, then we've got two, two, three, three. So we could have, let's take out the numbers we've got. We could have two ones in these boxes there and probably in the middle, say. Then the other four digits have to multiply to 72. We can't have five because we can't have three twos. So how do we multiply to 72 using four digits? And one of them in the central box This is assuming three ones. Yeah, this one can't be a two. I can't, I can't figure out the restrictions in my head. I'm sorry. I'm finding that very difficult to do. I think there are restrictions there and I just can't quite grasp them. Right, this cell can't be a three. Ah, well that's absolutely essential. We know where three goes in row two. It goes there. Now there is a three on the line. That's quite interesting. So we've got to make 24 out of all these five cells. We're allowed a couple of ones. Say that wasn't a one, then three of these would have to be different non-1s, and that would immediately multiply up to 24, but you'd have to increase it there. So we need a 1 in the middle. I think that's proved now, finally. Thank goodness. But now, these multiply up to 72. So we can't have a 9 on the line, or those would multiply up to 8. They'd all be 2s, and that would be too many 2s in the central box. So that's not a 9. This is a 9. That's not a 9, which means this can't be a 4, strangely. Um, 3, 9, 5. This is 4, 6, or 8. Oh, no, it's not 8, because there's an 8 looking at it from there. So we've got a 4, 6 pair, and this is 8. That deals with the 8, 1, 6 triple in the first column. This now is a 2, 4, 8 triple. This is a 1, unsurprisingly. And we've still got to make 24 from these three cells. So if that was a 4, which I think unlikely, this would have to be a 2 and a 3. But that would make this a 4 and a 6. And that's too much for this diagonal, because we can't have another 1 there. Yes, so that's a 2. Unsurprisingly, we get a 4-8 pair up at the top there. This becomes a 6. This becomes a 9. That works with the four on the line. This is a two in the corner. Now, right, we've got the seven and five. We need 72. Divide by six is 12 in these two cells. So it's either two, six or three, four. If it's two, six, they're that way round. If it's three, four, they're that way round. But it means these others are also 12. Oh no, look, there's a two there. So this can't be a two or a six. So it is 3, 4. There we go. These two are also going to multiply to 12 with a 2, 6. We get a 6 there and a 2 there. Now, let me just check the non-5, 7 or 1 digits. have to multiply to 72, and they do. Whew! Okay, that's a relief. Now, this 2, 4 pair is still unknown, um, but we must be finishing off. Now, those can't have a 2 in. In fact, we can do those. 4 and 4. 5. This is a 9-4 pair. This is now a 1-8-2 triple and we know where 1 goes, then we know where 2 goes and we can put in 8. That's an 8 in this 4-2-8 triple. They're all done. 
there's no eight there, so there's no nine in those two. Three and seven are resolved down here. We've got, that is a naked single six. Nice to find one of my old friends, finally. A seven there, two nine pair down here. Oh no, we do know what they are because we've got the two four pair looking at them. That fixes six and nine. Got four and six in the bottom row. Got one and four five there. Uh, seven and nine are resolved. This is a clever puzzle, isn't it? I mean, if you can handle the maths, it's great fun. I, I wish I'd been a bit better at that aspect of it. Two, six, four. This has become a four and a two. This isn't a deadly pattern. No, it's not because five goes with eight, five goes with seven, and nine goes with seven. And that is the solution to product 2520. 2520 is not the year in passengers, is it? I don't think it is. I'm making that up randomly. Anyway, fabulous puzzle from Ard, as always. Hope you had a go at that. That's entertainment all the way. And very much hope to see you on the channel again soon. I'll try not to cut off my exit line today, but I will say bye for now.